What's up everyone? Welcome to Rob's house. It's a beautiful day here in Eastern Tennessee. Great day to work on cars. Today, we're gonna swap the radiator out in the Corvette. So if you guys remember from my maintenance day video that I uploaded a little while ago, I thought that I had successfully troubleshooted the leak for my Corvette. Uh, I was losing coolant slowly but surely and uh, my upper radiator hose was loose. But even after tightening that, I was still losing some fluid. So I took my car over to Fast Tech Motorsports and I had them do a pressure test on my radiator. And sure enough, there's a crack on the side of the radiator. In these factory radi radiators, they use plastic intakes that are epoxied onto the side of the radiator. And with enough pressure cycle cycling and heat cycling, they eventually burst. So here, we have an all aluminum radiator. So we're gonna put this in, no more plastic. This should uh, hopefully resolve our issue. So we're gonna install this today. Let's get started. All right guys, we're all set up. We got the Corvette on jack stands. I got a camera over here so you guys can see what's going on. And uh, basically we're gonna have to do two things. I'm going to drain the radiator. And while I wait for everything to drip out, there's a couple things on the top that I have to disconnect. If you watch the end of my maintenance day video that I posted a couple weeks ago, you saw me uh, reinstall this air intake and uh, this upper radiator support. So I'm just gonna take all that stuff off, disconnect this map sensor and back line, and then just kinda get all that off, get get all these hoses free so that we can actually get at the radiator and then we'll start disassembling it. We have to uh, disconnect hoses. The other thing that I have here on top of my new radiator is I bought a new upper and lower radiator hose. Um, I'm suspecting that these are still the OEM radiator hoses and they've been heat cycled quite a few uh, quite a number of times over the 15 years of this car's life so i'm thinking that they might have expanded so i just wanted to get some some new hoses that haven't deteriorated will fit nice and tight i have some new hose clamps that have solid interiors so that they won't bite the rubber at all when i install it and uh yeah so we should have a, a much better looking cooling system when we're done with this so let's get started let's drain this radiator and get all this air and take off I just can't let you go Lord knows that I've tried to You said I was the only one No one likes being lied to You made this mess and left me with the pieces Now I wanna burn all the bridges between us Just wanted to give you an update, so check this out. So I removed the air intake and the upgrader support. I got the fan shroud out. Because I have an engine oil cooler, what I was doing in that time lapse was I have lines, I have the transmission lines on the other side, which all Corvettes have, but since this is a Z51, I also have a built-in engine oil cooler on this side of the radiator. So this, that connector right, right there, I had to get that off just so that I could not have obstruction to the fan shroud so I could get the fan shroud out. So uh, once I got that off, I was able to kind of uh, tilt the fan shroud like this and lift it right out of the top of the car. So now what we're gonna go ahead and do is there's a lower line for the engine oil cooler. There's a lower line for the, uh, for the transmission fluid cooler down there. And then um, we still have to deal with the lower radiator hose, which we now have access to. With that fan shroud out of the way, it's gonna be a lot easier. So this is our lower radiator hose right here. You can see it connects to the radiator there. So uh, I might do that from underneath the car, or at least the, um, the hose fitting over there may be easier to get to from underneath the car. The one up here I can just get to no problem from up here. So anyway, I'm gonna disconnect all that stuff. I think I can get the radiator out without without disconnecting this, I can probably just shift the radiator over that way. Um, but we got we got a nice amount of room in here now to work. I mean, as far as working on cars goes, this is a ton of room. Uh, radiator's drained. Uh, we're gonna lose a little more, um, you can kind of see the line down there, that little right angle down there. That's the bottom of the engine oil cooler line. So I'm probably gonna lose some oil, uh, but I have a drip pan there. So uh, when I pull that off, I'm not too worried about it. 
and then we can go ahead and slide the radiator out and um, put the new one in, you know, transfer all the fittings. We need to transfer all these rubber grommets and all of the fittings for the oil lines and stuff like that. And uh, then we'll begin reinstallation. So, so far so good. Uh, haven't run into any huge snags, so wish me luck. Here goes more of nothing. All right, check it out. So radiator's out, um, wasn't too bad. It was really just uh, disconnecting the lines and then it just kind of slides right out. Um, the, the AC condenser has these, these tabs coming off it that the radiator, radiator actually just slides right into. So there weren't any bolts or anything. It was just disconnecting the lines and that's it. Put the radiator over here. Uh, what I'm gonna have to do now, I just had this out on the grass cause it was, there was still a little bit of coolant in it. Um, I have to remove all these fittings, put them on the new radiator. Uh, these tabs are for the fan shroud mount that should just mount up right to the new radiator. Um, and we gotta take these these rubber grommets off and, and put them on the other radiator so that it'll slide into place uh, the way it's supposed to. So I'm gonna get started on that and then I'll show you guys. I'm not gonna film that. It's literally just unscrewing all these and putting them on the other radiator. So we'll be right back. All right guys, after a few hours of headaches, I found a solution here. So my transmission line fittings fit perfectly. They have a recess in there for the, uh, for the O-rings and that looks like it's sealed up nicely, but the engine oil cooler lines didn't. So I don't know if you can see it, but there's kind of like a little gap in there. So what I did was uh, I got a crush washer that has like a recess in it that fit around the o-ring to seal that up nice and tight so now we can begin reinstalling the radiator i just wanted to make sure that, the, that nothing was going to leak before i actually reinstall it in the car so now we'll get started on the reinstallation
All right, guys, she's all back together. I'm gonna I'm gonna fill her up with coolant and we'll fire her up and uh, hope nothing leaks. Uh, I didn't know if the car was gonna freak out and throw a bunch of codes and maybe not run right if I didn't have like this backline and uh, MAF sensor reconnected. So I was thinking about just kind of firing up without the um, upper radiator support on and without the air intake installed, but I decided to just play it safe and kind of reinstall that stuff. So anyway, just to go over what we've done, our coolant lines reinstalled, both of our transmission cooling lines are reinstalled, both of our engine oil cooling lines are reinstalled. You can't see them at all down here. We have a new lower radiator hose, we have a new upper radiator hose. Uh, now I just gotta, like I said, put coolant in the car, start it up and hope for the best. Let's do it. All right guys, well, we uh, filled the system back up with coolant. Um, probably gonna have to cycle this and then top it off but I used about a gallon of coin so far. Um, I'm gonna start her up, see how it goes, let her get warm, see if stuff starts leaking, and uh, top it off, and we should be good to go. Moment of truth. Guys, good news, uh, there don't appear to be any leaks. The uh, engine oil cooler lines don't seem to be leaking. The transmission oil cooler lines, uh, transmission fluid cooler lines do not seem to be leaking. The hoses don't seem to be leaking. Nothing seems to be leaking. Everything seems to be nice and tight. That said, I am getting a check coolant level light and that's because I filled about a gallon into the reservoir and the reservoir has been completely emptied now because once the thermostat opened, it actually uh, sucked all that coolant into the system. So good news is we're not leaking. I think what I'm gonna go ahead and do now is get the Corvette back on the ground, uh, top off the, the coolant because we, we're gonna need, I'm gonna need to do a, at least probably two more cycles of this in order to actually fill up the uh, radiator. There's no, um, on this car, there's no direct fill cap on this particular radiator. So I have to go through the reservoir, which is fine. It'll just say check coolant level and uh, I just made sure I didn't let the car get too hot or anything. So it got up to about 200 degrees and it said check coolant level. So I shut it off. Uh, I'll wait for it to cool down now and I'll refill it. Do that a couple more times until it's full and we should be good to go. So overall, I think, I think today was a success. On that note, thank you guys for watching today. I hope you found this uh, useful. I know I did a lot of time lapsing in here and not too much explaining, but radiator, radiator replacements are pretty straightforward. It's more or less just sort of undoing all your hose clamps, removing all your hoses, removing any additional lines. In my case, I have transmission fluid cooling lines and engine oil cooling lines. Uh, just kind of removing all that from the radiator and then just unbolting the radiator and pulling it out of the car, putting a new one in. It's, it's really not more involved than that. There's nothing else you really got to watch out for aside from spillage. Uh, make sure that, I mean, you're going to spill a lot of coolant. So just make sure that you have a huge drain pan. I have a 16 quart drain pan under the car right now. That's pretty much it. So hope you guys enjoyed this video. Hit that like, hit that subscribe, and I'll see you guys next time.